All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's form building webinar. My name is Nick and I'll be walking us through the builder today. Today we'll be talking a little bit about reformatting sections and to do that we will be working off of our form doctor training packet as always. So we'll go ahead and go on down to the packets and forms page. And just as a reminder, if you have any questions as we go along, I will be opening up that chat a little bit later in the webinar, but I'll be more than happy to answer anything that comes through or go back over any information if necessary. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. To edit an existing form, which we will be uh, doing to our form doctor training packet, we'll click those three dots on the right side and click edit forms. So we'll take us into step one of the builder, which is the add forms page. And on this page, you'll be able to add or remove any tabs from your form or from your packet, excuse me. You can use the buttons at the bottom of the list to add tabs to your packet. And just to talk about them briefly, uh, you'll have your First option being the scratch tab. This will add a blank form for you to build out a custom form. It will just simply be a blank area with just a patient name widget. The next option will be to use one of our pre-made templates. You can click on that button. It will take you right to our template library. And if you clicked on any one of the images, it will open up to a live preview of the form. And all that means is that if there are any required questions as indicated by the red asterisk, then that tag will pop up when we click past it, including the red outline of any specific fields that will be required to be completed. But this is a great way to get a feel for how the um, form is going to look and how your patient's going to interact with that form. So uh, we, as mentioned earlier, we do have many, many of them in here uh, and you are absolutely free to edit them to your liking. So please feel free to use those. It will help you save a lot of time in terms of just getting something that's already formatted, already built, and then you can just edit out the information as needed. Your third option will be the import form option. This will allow you to import a duplicate copy from any packet that already exists in your account. So we could bring over that consent form from our registration packet, and it does not pull it out of the other packet. It simply makes a duplicate copy into this one. Uh, so if you do need to make any edits to those forms, you will need to do so in both packets. And finally, the convert file option. This is going to be available for all pro and higher plan accounts. Um, this will allow you to upload a document to be built by our team. And once they have completed that, they will publish that for you. But we won't need to use any more of these today. We'll just be working off of that information tab. So let's go ahead and click next to build. All right, this takes us into step two, which is the builder itself, where we can update the actual information on the forms. And as you can see, we have a simple intake form here already set up for us. And we'll just talk about different ways of reformatting this uh, to either make it look a little bit better or to make it a little bit easier for the patient to fill out. And those will be really the two factors that you will be including in your decision-making on how that form is going to look as you build it out. Um, obviously, one way is going to be whatever is aesthetically pleasing to you. And the other way, uh, which I find to be the two most driving uh, ways anyway, but the other one would be making the form very simple and easy for the patient to work from start to finish just to ensure that you or they don't get fatigued as they go through and start to skip the unrequired questions. If a form is easy to fill out, it's much more likely that your patients will answer all of the questions. But there is a balance between those two uh, directions. So ideally, it will be an easy form for the patient to fill out that also looks good. So we'll start up top with our patient name and our address. Maybe we want to add a few more fields to this question or to this form as well, uh, such as maybe a social security number uh, and a birth date. So to do so, we can go ahead and just drag and drop our date widget just underneath our patient name widget. And if we were to click that date widget, it will just be added at the bottom of the form. But if we were to click and drag, we can drag that right to the position we desire it to be. Now you'll notice that these are stacking on top of each other because this is the first layer of the form area. 
so it is not formatted. To do that, we will need to place a column widget down. So we'll do this just to save a little bit of space, but also to keep that patient name and date widget together. We'll open up that date widget by hovering over the element, clicking the orange pencil icon, and then updating our title. We'll also want to make sure anytime that you use a date widget, it will always default to today's date. So if you want to capture a date that is uh, you know, in the past, you will need to untoggle this today default toggle just so that it doesn't default to today's date. That's not going to mean that they will be unable to select a date in the past. It will just default to today's date. And as it does that, the field is being read as completed. So if we were to have a required date of birth field that does have the today default toggled on, well, this, this as it stands will be counted as a completed question. So they will be able to submit the form without updating that date of birth. So it's very important to uncheck that today default to force them to make a selection. But now we have our patient name widget and our date of birth in the same column. I prefer to have that information together, but again, this is all personal preference at the end of the day. So you will be able to format these forms however you see fit. Next, we'll go ahead and add our social security number and we'll do that into our uh, demographic text fields down here. We'll just add it at the end and maybe we'll ask for SSN. With the text field widgets, you are able to select a format as well. So we can click on this format dropdown as it is going to default to text. You can also select email, which will force them to put in an at dot something. Number, which will not allow them to enter any text into the field. Phone number, which will require them to enter 10 digits and social security number, which will also limit them to a specific amount of digits. All right, and we can close that up. And now we've added our, our social security number to this, this area. Now, the formatting of our column has been thrown off a little bit because we now have four elements in a column that is set to three wide. The easiest way to update this is to just update the column number. So we can go ahead and click four if we want all four of those fields to be on that same line or if you want to give the patient a little bit more room to, to you know, place their answer, we can make that too wide instead. If you are using paper forms, printed out PDFs for the patients to fill out in office, I definitely recommend uh, leaning towards the two column format because as we all know, everyone's handwriting is vastly different and some people's handwriting is very large while others is very small. So I always just recommend uh, giving the patient the most area to write out those answers in the event that you will be using paper forms. And typically the easiest way to do that is just a two column format because it will still look formatted and look nice, but it will give the patient enough area to give you the relevant information as well. We'll leave that one with the two wide column. And before we move on to anywhere or any of the other questions on the form, we'll go ahead and address the address. So as it currently stands, our address question is a single text field with four answer selections or inputs, I should say. And when we open that up, we can see all of that information here. This will keep this as one single widget and it can then be moved as a group of information. However, if we were to place this into a column, then it will be formatted down, giving them less space, um, Typically, you would leave that address question on its own line anyway, because it will be asking for multiple sets of information, uh, just being the address, city, state, and zip. Another way that you could do this, and we'll just build this one right up underneath it, is just place a column and then use four text fields instead. And we could just go ahead and duplicate these out three times, address, city, state, and zip.
All right. And we'll just update that column to be four wide so it's all on the same line. And every time I start Zoom, my computer starts acting strange, but there we go. All right, so these would be the two different ways that you could do a question like that. Uh, if we pop over to the style page, which will give us a live preview of the form, you can see how that will look a little bit different. It will just be uh, a little more clear as to the titling of those other fields. But again, all personal preference. Let's go ahead and go back to the builder. And actually, before we move on, as I mentioned earlier with the live previews, you can see these required tags popping up for us. Uh, you can also test conditional information here as well. So if you have any additional information that's going to be presented depending on a specific answer selection, uh, you can also see how that's going to work here and what it's going to look like. And if it's not looking the way that you prefer, then the easiest way to fix that is to just go right back into the builder, update that information accordingly, and uh, back to the style page to test. That way you don't have to go through the process of saving your changes, going back to the send and receive page, back down to the packets and forms page, back into the editing process. Um, it will just be right back and forth, saving you a lot of time. All elements will default to be aligned to the left with the question at the top and the answer selections at the bottom. I've currently set this one to be aligned right. If you want to update that information, it's as simple as toggling the align left toggle on or off. And again, it will be defaulted to be on, but we can go ahead and align that left just to keep everything consistent because I do have pretty much all of the other questions aligned left here. And so we'll do that the same with our conditional information. Now, when you open a conditional question, which we have here, each one of these answer selections are presenting different information. So we can open up our conditional question. You'll notice in the Facebook option at the very bottom, it says drag and drop form elements here. This lets us know that there is no conditional information coming if they select that option. The ones that say show conditional fields will have that conditional area hidden if there are elements within. So when we click that show conditional fields, it will open that up for you. This just keeps everything uh, nice and tight, just in the event that you have, say, an entire consent form you know, inside one of these answers, because that way um, you'll be able to see all of your answer selections and they'll be you know, available for you. And you won't have to scroll for 10 minutes to get down to the last answer selection. But we can go ahead and left align these questions as well. And just as a test before we left aligned the friend's name, I do recommend left aligning if you are using the paper forms uh, again, because this will provide them with the full width of that area to fill out their answer, whereas the right align will keep that information uh, nice and tight on that same line. So depending on how much room you want to give the patient, uh, left align and right align will provide you uh, with different styles. But just to keep everything consistent, we will left align all of our information in our conditional fields. And we'll click done to save that up. And we can take a look at that on the style page. And now everything will be given that full answer area. And we can select our drop down. Everything's nice and left aligned, looking consistent. And we'll go back to build. Next, we'll talk about a single checkbox section, which is what we have here. This is one column widget with 12 uh, single checkboxes within. And again, if things are not looking the way that you want in the builder, I always do recommend going to the style page because this is what it's actually going to look like for the patient on that live version. So you can see that the answer selections do look a little bit more formatted than they do in my builder. And that's just because this is formatting to the size of my screen. But each one of these is a single select, or excuse me, a single checkbox widget, which we have here in the form elements about halfway down. And it's just going to look like that. A single checkbox widget can be made conditional. However, you will need to toggle on that conditional functionality, and then you'll be able to place whatever information you need inside but when it comes to reformatting sections like this, again, it's as simple as updating the column that is uh, containing it. So we can update that to two wide. It takes up a little bit more room than I would like, 
The four looks nice. We'll go ahead and leave it with the four. You can go to the style page to check that, make sure it looks good for us. And depending on whether you're looking to save room on your, your printouts, um, on those, those exported submissions, that will be whenever you may want to cram all four onto one line. You know, maybe we don't need that you know, additional mailing address or, or guardian address, whatever the case may be. Um, that will be when you want to start worrying about saving space is when you'll start to tighten things up a little bit more. But otherwise, you can just make it look uh, what looks good for you and what will be easy for the patient to see and select as they go along. If you find that your information is a little bit too compact, what you can do is use, like say for instance, uh, if I wanted to separate these two sections a little bit more instead of having them run up right on top of one another, what we could do is add a page break widget in, which can be found in the formatting tools about halfway down. And we'll go ahead and drag and drop our page break in between those two, our title and our selection option. And you'll notice that we have that line there, but we don't necessarily need it. We can open up our page break widget for editing, toggle off that line. Now, one thing to note here, these two toggles will be enabled by default on the page break widget, the show line and the use as page break. We'll turn off our show line just so that it adds a kind of a blank space in between those two elements, but we'll also want to make sure to uncheck the use as page break toggle, because if this is enabled, then this will act as a literal page break, meaning that anytime you print the form out, any information that comes after this widget is going to be pushed to a brand new page. Even if this is the very first line of the new page, this will be starting on the next page. So always make sure to uncheck that use as page break toggle if you are just going to use this as a formatting tool as, as a spacer. All right, but we can go back to the style page and now we have a little bit more breathing room in between those two sections. If you were looking to update this section, instead of being multiple individual elements, we could do two things here. We could either use the multi-select option, which will be one widget, with multiple answer selections for each one of these. You can also use the multiple checkboxes for that. If we were to add, to, let's go ahead and add the same amount of elements that we have in our column. I'm just going to click that add option button. And since it was my last action, I'm clicking spacebar on my keyboard to repeat that action to give us 12 options. And we'll go ahead and do the same in our multiple checkboxes. just so we can see how they will differ. But the multi-select option is going to try to format to take up the least amount of space that it can. And these boxes, these answer boxes, will grow to the size of your answer selection. The multiple check boxes will function a bit differently, and it will also allow you to have that functionality of the column as well. If we open our multiple check boxes, we can click the show as columns toggle to enable it. And now we will have the column functionality. We can set the number of, of checkboxes per row all the way up to nine. So we could go down to two or we could go to six if we wanted to keep it in that same style that we had before or four because I had changed it to that. But that's well, uh, that will also give you that conditional functionality and it will take up a little bit less space as well because these are uh, single elements with multiple answer selections. Now, you will need to go in and copy and paste all of these answers into each one of these one at a time, but that would be how you would change from a single select or a single checkbox section to a multi-style widget. Um, it will just depend on how you want to collect that information and really how you want that information to be displayed. But if you are looking to save space, that multi-select option is a really great option because, again, uh, it will just format to the size of your answer selection, and it will just try to stay as tight as possible. For our medication question, we currently have set up a large text field. This is going to allow the patient to type out as much text as they need, but maybe we want to specify this a little bit more. Instead of just having a general text field that we would like to collect it from, maybe we want to give the patient the opportunity to add 
as many as they need to just to keep it to a specific amount. And to do that, we'll have two variations of doing of using the widgets to achieve that. And you're going to be wanting to either use the table widget or the repeating section widget. They will look very similar when they're placed onto the form area. However, they will function very differently. The table widget will only be able to contain text fields and drop down widgets. So we can place our text field and maybe this will be medication. We'll add another text field for dosage. We'll add a third text field for frequency. We'll keep it simple and just have the three options currently. The table will allow you up to nine widgets to be included in it. And it will also allow the patient to add as many items as they need. We can go ahead and update this table to say uh, medication list, or we can actually just copy and paste our large text field question. There we go. We can also update the item label. If you don't want to have an item label shown, you can just delete that and it will just say add instead. And since we're asking for medications, vitamins, and supplements, then we will just leave that item label blank. If this were just medications, I would probably take this and write medication and it will say add medication. We'll leave it blank for now. We'll close that up. And we'll go ahead and do the same to our repeating section. The difference between these two widgets is that the repeating section will allow any element within it. So you can even format within here as well, which you will need to because this is going to be an unformatted area. To demonstrate that, we'll add our three text fields and we'll notice that they stack on top of one another, just as if they would outside of that widget. We'll go ahead and add our column and drop those in just to keep them nice and formatted. We'll update our columns, or excuse me, our text fields as well, medication. I guess we are only asking for medication, but whatever. Uh, dosage and frequency. I'm not adding any placeholder information just in the interest of saving time, but I will add placeholder information to one of the above, just so that you will be able to see how that will be displayed differently. All right, and it will have that placeholder in that, that cell or that field. But when it comes to updating the repeating section, we can do the same. So maybe you know, we'll just do medications for this one. And we'll update that item label to medication. You'll also notice that it says medication one. That's because when we go to the style page and to test this out, we can scroll down to our new, we added elements here, which we have our table up top and our repeating section on the bottom. If we were to add any fields to our table, it will not have a title on it. It will just be a brand new row of information. Now, you will see that that placeholder information will display in each one of those. So if you do not wish to include that, you don't necessarily need to, but it will show on each new cell. When we add another section for the repeating section, it's going to just add another uh, another column exactly the same. So we'll have those those question titles. We'll have a brand new item here, which is our medication two, which is why that first one says medication one. But both of these widgets will allow the patient to add an unlimited amount, uh, as many as they need. So that way, if they only need to include one, they'll only need to fill out that first one. If they need to include 10 or 15, they'll have the ability to do so. And you won't have to set uh, a specific amount on the form for them. If they need to remove any, they can just use those X arrows on the right to get rid of them. All right, we'll go ahead and go open that chat. Time has gotten a little bit away from me, but that chat is open. If you do have any questions, please feel free to get those in. And I'll be more than happy to answer them. And since we're down here, we'll talk about our final question, which is our pain question. Currently it is aligned to the right. We'll go ahead and align that left just to be consistent with the rest of our form. And we'll show, we'll click that show conditional fields to check out our drawing. Now the drawing will only be able to be right aligned unless you make it full width. That will make that 
that body image full width across the entirety of the uh, form area. We can take a look at that here. And here we go, very large, but we can go back and make it smaller if we don't want it to take up that much of, of, the, of the page. And you'll have options from tiny, small, medium, big, and full width. This is the drawing widget, which can be found in the images and uploads section, your second option down. Uh, just a quick distinction between the image and the drawing widgets. Both will allow you to upload an image file. The image widget will only be, you'll only be able to upload that image. The patient won't be able to interact with it. It will simply just be a way to display an image or a logo on the form. The drawing widget will, however, allow the patient to draw on it. So if we were to, uh, let's just go ahead and pull this out of this conditional question, save us a little bit of time. And we'll go delete that question. All right, that way we can just go back and forth to the style page without having that extra step. But with the drawing widget, we can upload any image of our choosing and the patient will be able to draw on that image. So it's very important that you don't place a logo or something that can be defaced onto your form in a drawing widget because that's never uh, an ideal situation. But on the drawing widget, if the patient is using a mobile device or a tablet, they will be able to use their finger or a stylus to sign. If they're on a computer, then they can use their mouse to click and sign. This will hold true for the signature widget as well. All right, Ooh, question. I use clients instead of patients. Is there a way to change this for the account where you'll have to change it each time? The patient name will default to patient name each time. Um, you will be able to update that, that patient name to say client name, but it will need to be done for, for each one. However, if you are get, uh, building out a packet with multiple elements of the patient name, what I would just recommend doing, uh, and just to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and back to add. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple scratch forms. Scratch one. Scratch two, just for demonstration purposes. But what I would do in this situation is I would duplicate it as it says client name here, uh, just so you don't have to go in and type patient over and over again. Um, oh, actually, no, you can't, I don't think you can duplicate the patient name anymore. Yep, you could use the. Uh, I would just recommend you would you would then need to I'm, I forgot that this was updated I do apologize you will need to update that patient name to say client name each time or you could just make it say name it is important though to know that the patient name widget is going to be needed at least once in each packet it doesn't have to be on each tab it simply needs to be included one time on the base layer of the form so this would be fine in this column because this column's on that base layer it just wouldn't uh, be able to be the only one on the form and within a conditional question or something like that. Uh, but this is what communicates with our database to store the file under a specific name. So the submission, when they type in their first and last name, that's the name that that submission is going to be stored under. So it's also very important that you don't use the patient name widget to collect any guardian names or um, you know, employee names or any any other name than the person you're trying to store that information under, because these will all autofill, and we can change it to say you know all sorts of stuff. It won't have an effect because they all share the same short codes here. So we could say you know mailing address. That's completely wrong, but just to give you an idea, they can all be titled differently. They're all going to be the same widget though, because of, they all share that same field name shortcode, which will make them autofill. So if I start to type in my name, webinar test, then those are going to fill out. This is my middle name. So if you have that client name widget as your final, uh, maybe it's on the very final page as a guardian signature or something like that, or a manager signature or whatever the case may be, then when they enter their name, it's going to overwrite all of the ones that came before it, and then they'll submit it and it's gonna come in under their name instead. So all other names should just be taken with the general text field widget, and you will have the opportunity to add those inputs as well if you want it to mirror the styling of that patient name widget. Okay. 
All right. And whenever you have made the changes to your packet and you're ready to save them, you'll click next to style. This will give you an opportunity to update uh, any of the styling on your packet. Uh, I'd like to use this as a live preview of the form, as I mentioned several times in this webinar, but you will be able to update the styling as well. And if you have styled a packet already, you've already added a logo, you've added a background color or any other styling options that you've changed, for any new packets or other packets, you'll simply just need to select the style, the packet from the style dropdown and click import. This will bring over the logo, background color, uh, any of the other styling options that have been made, and you won't have to make those again uh, for each new packet. We'll go ahead and click next to publish, which will take us to step four, which says publish, but we have one more step to go before these changes are saved and made that forms live, live version. This will give us one last opportunity to update the title of our packet or collect any of the other information that we might need in terms of sending that out or using it. But if we're ready, we can click the My Account button or the Finish Building button, go to My Account. Either one of these is going to take you back to the Send and Receive page. And at this point, you'll know that those changes have been saved and published. We can go ahead and go back to our Packets and Forms page, click on that live link of the form to ensure that those changes have been made, and they have, and we're good to go. Now our, we can send this out and our patients will be able to fill out our updated version of the form. Um, I did add those scratch tabs. So just before we, we close up today, I would like to show what I was initially going to talk about there. Let's go ahead and remove these patient name widgets. So because we're going to be sending some new ones that way. But if you do find uh, yourself uh, what I was going to talk about was duplication. So if you have some of this information and you want this to be included on another page as well, um, if you do want it to be, so we can go ahead and open that up, click duplicate, which will duplicate the question and all of the placeholder information. However, the field name short codes, which we have set as address, city, state, and zip, will be randomly generated to new ones. These on the first one that say address, city, state, and zip, have all been changed from the original short codes. When an element is added to the form, it will automatically generate a short code that's not being used anywhere else in the form. And this is to prevent any unwanted auto population from happening. Uh, if you do want that to go ahead and auto populate, we would just need to change these field names to be whatever uh, they are in, in this one. And it would need to be identical. So it is case sensitive and, and all of that. You won't be able to add any spaces here, so that won't be a concern. Uh, but if you are looking to autofill information and move it to another page, you'll just need to ensure that those short codes are the same, which I have not done, but uh, we are running out of time. Uh, but once those short codes have been changed, then you can use the move function to select a tab to move it to, and it will move it to the bottom of that new tab. So this would be a way that you could move, uh, you know, groups of information if you needed that information to be displayed on multiple tabs, but it's all going to be the same information. Highly recommend just auto-filling it and then moving it over uh, because it's going to make it a lot easier on your patients to in, instead of having to fill out their address five different times. All right. I do apologize for keeping everyone over today, but I do thank you for sticking it out with me. Unfortunately, that will conclude today's forum building webinar, though, as it does not look like we have any more questions. But just as a reminder, we do host the forum building webinars every Tuesday and Thursday at 1130 a.m. Pacific time. And on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, we host onboarding webinars where we go through general usage of the account, how to update users send forums. Uh, we do go over editing forms a little bit in that one as well, but those will be held at 1030 a.m. Pacific time again on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And if you would like to keep track of our webinar schedule, you can always come to my account support search guide, which will take you to our product guide. And we have tons of articles that can be very helpful uh, in terms of getting you familiar with uh, with form doctor, how to use it, how to build forms and the building forms section will be very helpful as well because we have articles on all of our widgets and how to you know set up autofill how to do things like that but if we come to the form doctor update section we'll have our webinar schedule on the left we can click on that and it will have our onboarding information this information won't really change too much from time to time on those onboarding webinars but our form building webinars will be changing 
for each day. So please feel free to come here and see if there's anything that you are interested in joining us for. If you will, are interested but won't be able to be in attendance, don't worry, we will be posting the recordings of those webinars after the fact as well. And when you click this link, it will just take you directly to our YouTube channel and we'll have some timestamps on there on those videos for you as well. So please feel free to come back and check this out. Each month has had slightly different themes. So our February webinars were creating new forms, adding new forms to accounts and building those out. The March webinar, we went through every single widget in the builder and talked about how to use that and you know, really what they can do. So the March webinar series is very helpful if you're just getting started in the builder. And then April and May were all about editing existing forms. And this in the month of June, we're talking about re reformatting sections and forms. So please feel free to go back through and check out any of our previously posted videos as they can be very helpful in uh, getting you familiar with the builder. But that will conclude us for today. Thank you again for joining us. And if you do have any coworkers or staff that would like to learn this information, or if you would like for them to learn this information, please feel free to send them our way. These are all free and we do encourage everyone to join us as often as they like until they're comfortable with the product and beyond. So thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Hope to see you again very soon.